Dr. Tamese Budwan, hello. Hello and welcome to my office. Thank you. First, we ask you to kindly present yourself to all those watching you right now. Bodwen Tamiza Azamo is my name. I was born in Obili Chapel in Yaoundé. And then I went to school at Ecole Publique du Plateau at Temenge. Also in Yaoundé, I went to Lycée General Leclerc. And then I went to Lycée Classique de Bafoussam. After my A-level, or what is called the French Baccalaureate, I went to uh, the high teacher training school in Yaoundé, where I studied mathematics. And then I worked two years as a civil servant before going to the Netherlands, where I uh, studied mathematics with statistics. I left the Netherlands with a master's degree to do a PhD at the Technical University of Dortmund in Germany. And then I started working. I worked in the UK, I worked in Germany, I worked in France, I worked in Switzerland, I worked in Liechtenstein. And when I was doing research, I also spent some research time in the United States. Thank you. So what does ETEL mean and how did the idea of creating ETEL come to you? Thanks for the question. ETAL in French is étudier et travailler en Allemagne. If we have to put it into English, it would be to study and to work in Germany. And we started the project because we wanted to ease Cameroonian studying in Germany or Cameroonian working in Germany. I've seen enough Chinese, Indian, Filipinos and lots of other nationality come to find their livings in Germany. And I asked myself, how can we make sure that it becomes much easier for Cameroonians to leave their country and come and make a future and build a future in Germany. That's the reason we started the project, that we start, did the project in 2013. Okay, so does Germany have an aging population? Yes. Uh, we are seven and the average in Cameroon, each family might have five or six children. In Germany, they have 1.41. So, out of two people, the two people will be replaced by 1.41, which is a decreasing sequence, meaning that the population will shrink. And this shrinking population has economic disadvantages. That's why they are opening their borders, to allow qualified people to come and strengthen their economy. Okay. Do we pay for studies in Germany? Generally not. We do not pay for studies in Germany. There is no tuition fees as you can find in Canada, in the United States or in England. Uh, Germany has 16 federal states and in some states sometimes they can ask for some kind of little tuition fees. And when you even explain that you're coming from a poor country or a developing country like Cameroon, they waive that tuition fees even for you. So generally speaking, we can say that we do not pay for tuition fees in Germany. Do you have partners in Germany? We have two types of partners in Germany. We have university partners that are state university in Germany sending Germans to do some uh, uh, qualification exams here for our students that would like to study in, their, in those universities there. Those Germans, when they come here and do their test, they send the list to the consulate. Another type of partner that we have are the partners for apprenticeships, partners for vocational training. There we have mechanical, nurse, restoration, hotels. So we have two types of partners. And in total, we have more than 100 partners in Germany. So why particularly the German, German language? Well, the German language first because we don't pay tuition fees there. Students can find them themselves there if they're not lazy. You're allowed to work there 120 days per school year or let me say per academic year. And you can want, and those 140 days can also be broken into 240 half days. So uh, you have lots of advantages uh, uh, studying in Germany or doing the vocational training there. It's the first economy in Europe. They have great facilities. They have good labs. They have great teachers. And if you have certificates there, they're all over the world acknowledged, appreciated and recognized. So what are the characteristics of the training center ETAL? ETAL, we try to build a good and strong relationship with the parents. Because the parents and, 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 and us, we try then to coach the child so as to successfully do the apprentice here or the training here in order to apply for the visa and in Germany. And we take time advising students, advising parents, uh, checking the files, making sure that everything runs smooth, not only here, but also in Germany upon their arrival. So how do you guide, follow and process the files you receive here? 
the first thing we do is we look at the result sleep. This is very important. Without result sleep, there is nothing we can do. Sometimes we, we, we do not even accept to have a discussion with you without having this result sleep because the result sleep shows the performances of the students. We have this discussion with the student, we have this discussion with the parents, and we make some proposals what could suit or what could be a, um, a good choice for that candidate once in Germany. And then once he's there and has started with us, we inform our partner that we have new candidate for this specific type of vocational training or for this specific type of field of study at a certain university. And then we process the file by gathering all the necessary document that we need to send to Germany to be able to get the necessary paper for the visa. And at the end, we organize upon visa issuance, their arrival in Germany, and organizing as well how to pick them from the airport. And how do you organize the welcome of students in Germany? When I am in Germany and the person is not landing too far away from me, I personally go to the airport and get the person. When I'm not there or when the person is too far away, just because we have already at least 500 students from Italy in Germany, we send the nearest person to the airport to take the, um, the new candidate. And sometimes it costs that person a day off, like taking a day off to go and pick a guy from Etal. And we're expecting the new person that arrives to also do that same sac sacrifice somewhere in the future when new people will be coming. Mm, so what type of people do you recruit in Etal? At Etal, there are at least two conditions one has to fulfill. You have to be younger than 32 years old and you will have to have at least the A-level or a certificate which is comparable to an A-level. That can be the equivalent of brevet de technicien or brevet professionnel. Even if these are A-level from countries like Central African Republic or Chad, we all take them. We do not take probatoire, we do not take O-level, we do not take BPC. That is not enough to be able to study, uh, to follow our program. So what are the registration procedures in Italy? In Italy, you prove that you're younger than 32. You prove that you have a secondary school living certificate that is at least comparable to the A-level. You come with a national identity card. And we need to have a proof that your parents are okay or that they, that they do agree that you do the training at our institution. So what future for the learners at the end of the training do you propose here at Etal? We train people at Etal to apply for the visa for Germany. And we give our best for them to have the visa. The consulate is very careful in attributing visa to people to enter their country. And only the consulate has the final decision with no external influence in deciding who goes to Germany, who doesn't. But we know that if somebody speaks the German language very good, if somebody has been prepared and has matured his project in Germany, it, then, then the person has more chance in, in, in convincing the consulate during the interview that the project that they have for Germany is a solid project, it's a good one. And most of the time they have the visa. When the visa is denied, we try to see what we can do. Sometimes you write a letter to explain why they should give you the visa. Sometimes you apply for the second time. But there's nothing you can do quickly. Take your time, learn German, speak German properly. And by doing that, you will increase the chance of seeing the German consulate issue you a visa. And what is the midterm balance sheet of this training center? Well, uh, we've started in... Uh, November 2013, today we have at least 500 students from Etal in Germany. About 200 are doing vocational training with salaries, helping their families at the end of the month pay the bills, supporting the additional cost for hiring tutors for their siblings that stayed in Cameroon. So we are, the number of people applying for the vocational training with salary in Germany is getting bigger. And we have more than 300 students, and students in top universities like the University of Aachen, the University of Berlin, the University of Darmstadt. These are well 
known university over the world and we're very proud to have young Cameroonians competing with the greatest mind, with the brightest students in Germany. This is very nice for us and we're growing, we're growing. We'll be opening Etal in Bafusam as of September the 1st. And what are your short, medium and long term projects? Well, as I just said, uh, we want to open Etal in Bafusam. We want to make parents more aware of the chance that Germany offers to young Cameroonian to either study there or eventually do a vocational training there with a paid salary at the end of the month. We are launching in October the Young German International School Complex, which is a, an international school where we'll have to learn at least three languages, French, English and German, and eventually Chinese and Arabic. We want students to pass subjects there with 60% so that they should know that the 50% is not good enough. Other countries are doing that. We want students there to stay at school the whole day from 7.30 to 6.30 and learn how they can work hard. It is not enough to go home at 12 or at 3. These are for weak people who want to build and train strong minds for, for the future, people that will be able to compete internationally. Another project will be to um, um, create, to construct an a hospital that will al allow young Africans to do the um, specialization in Germany. But before that, there is a training they'll have to follow with our German partners. So these are the short and mid-term projects. So now at the end of our interview, do you have a last word or message for all those that are watching you now? Well, the message is simple. To tell parents you're not alone in looking for what your children can achieve as soon as they obtain the A-level. If you need help, if you need advice, we can not only advise you, but we, we can help you and support you organizing the future of that children. For example, in Germany, where they do not pay for tuition fees, where they offer vocational trainings with salary, there is something we definitely can do there. Look for us. We are in Yaoundé, we are in Douala, we are in Chang, we are soon going to be in Bafusam. And I think we can make something great out of it. Thank you. So thank you very much for answering our questions, Doctor. I'm the one thanking you.